Hi everyone, long time no see. I hope everyone's doing well in these difficult times and times of stress. So for my presentation today, I am gonna be focusing on the ethical dilemma of rationing medical care in regards to COVID-19. And the region in Europe that I will be focusing on is Italy. So that brings me to my research question for the presentation today, which is how do hospitals in Italy decide which COVID-19 patients to prioritize when resources are scarce and capacity is exceeded? And so the article that I chose um, after reading a bunch about this topic is a New York Times article, and I felt as though the journalist did a really good job of explaining um, how how um, doctors in Italy are deciphering who do I treat, what is the ethics bet between treating this person or this person, and it's just an overwhelming thought, um, to be quite honest with you, just thinking about oh my gosh, I have two patients who desperately need to live. One's 20, one's 80, who do I pick? And that is what I will be um, continuing to explain further on in this presentation. And that is basically the gist of what that New York Times article was discussing. And the New York Times article was called Italy's Healthcare System Groans Under Coronavirus, A Warning to the World. I will link that along with this video as well as my PowerPoint for you guys. To begin, I'm just going to talk about a quote that I found very powerful and it was from a doctor in Italy about a month ago when she passed out on her computer after a very long shift um, and it's, she says, we are on our last legs physically and psychologically. Francesca, a colleague who took the picture said on Italian television on Wednesday, urging people to protect themselves to avoid spreading the virus. Otherwise, the situation will collapse, provided it hasn't already. So this brings me to my first section of this presentation, which is deciding whom to treat and how it comes down to a very serious ethical dilemma. And so I decided to break this up into three theories of how to make ethical triage decisions, um, egal egalitarianism, utilitarianism, and prioritarianism. <laughs> Sorry about that. Prioritarianism. That's a hard word. <laughs> so to begin with egalitarianism, basically um, this seeks to treat patients equally and uses a lottery system to select vaccine recipients is basically one example of that. And with utilitarianism, it aims to maximize total benefit generally measured by the remaining life years or expected remaining high quality years that decision will save. And lastly, with prioritarianism, got it. <laughs> it's basically also known as the rule of rescue, um, doctors are starting to call it. Um, and basically, you treat the sickest patient first, regardless of their age, disability. It's just whoever's the sickest, you treat them. Um, emergency rooms tend to operate on this principle as well. For instance, you choose to treat, obviously, the person with a gunshot wound, um, before a person with a broken leg or arm because who's going to die first in this situation, you know? So although each of these appeals to certain moral intuitions that doctors may have, they all do have some serious issues. For instance, let's begin with egalitarianism. In order to treat patients equally, that also means you have to treat them at random. Since egalitarianism does not differentiate between the age of patients or the severity of their conditions. Um, it also may easily come off as unjustified or, in other words, a wasteful use of resources, if you think about it in that sense. Moving on to utilitarianism, which I will be mainly focusing on for the other half of this presentation. Basically, the flaws of this is it ranks quality of life and completely ignores the moral imperative of urgency. For instance, here's an example. Imagine that the same medical resources could be used to save either a 75-year-old um, coronavirus patient or to perform a dozen hip replacements for many, many 65-year-olds. 
The second option creates more years of happy, healthy life, but at the same time, some would see it as the wrong choice because the person with corona is obviously going to die. So that's how that comes down. And lastly, with prioritarianism. <laughs> It's basically a rule to prioritize the sickest patients first, and this essentially can clash with the goal of helping the greatest number possible, using an extensive amount of resources on a single patient with only a small um, chance of survival could result in refusing treatment to multiple patients who are less sick and more likely to survive if they are treated. So. This brings me to an important quote that I saw in one of my articles, the New York Times article. The war has literally exploded and battles are uninterrupted day and night, the doctor Daniel Macini wrote, calling the situation an epidemiological disaster that has overwhelmed doctors. So moving on to what makes one life more worth saving than another? Well, this connects me to the philosopher David Hume, and I'm going to connect his theories to COVID-19. So to begin with, his one of his many theories that he created connects greatly to this PowerPoint presentation, which is his principle of utility in which he created. And basically what this principle states is that actions or behaviors are right as long as they promote happiness or pleasure. Wrong if they produce unhappiness or pain. Therefore, utility is a teleological um, principle and many utilitarians believe that pleasure and pain are objective and states can be more or less quantified. So as I said, he is the founder of Moral Theory of Utility and in my opinion, for Hume, prioritizing those who can benefit others is a defensible choice in regards to COVID-19 and this whole ethical dilemma that is occurring in hospitals. So, for instance, Hume, like I just mentioned, would favor utilitarian approach since it considers multiple factors, for instance, the life expectancy of patients, some types of adjustments of quality of life, maybe, or maybe even the patient's ability to help others. Like, for instance, if a war doctor got the coronavirus, that person can help a bunch of other people in the army. So you would want to do all you could in this utilitarian approach to save that person so they can therefore continue to save other lives, if that makes sense. Um, in Hume's treatise of, treatise of Human Nature, <laughs> um, he introduces a microscopic theory which Basically, is the principle that to understand an idea, we must first break it down into various simple ideas that make it up. So if any of these simple ideas are still difficult to understand, we must isolate it and reenact the impression that gave rise to it. So I see this connecting perfectly with the coronavirus epidemic because, for instance, in terms of choosing who to save from the virus, these doctors must essentially use this microscopic theory idea to examine the two patients, let's say patient A, 75, patient B, 20, and they must break everything down in between those patients into, for instance, quality of life post-recovery to um, who will most likely survive using the ventilator, three, possibly even their age. Um, if they have any underlying health conditions, maybe the 75 year old's completely healthy and the 20 year old maybe is going through chemo. So this is what doctors have to break down to determine who do I save or not in this situation if there's only one ventilator left. So as I, you can see, I'm running out of time here. So basically to conclude and wrap all of this up, the questions that I'm going to pose is basically like what insights have we obtained after listening to this presentation? Is this the right course of action? What should we do? Well, in my opinion, when it comes down to how hospitals have to decide which COVID-19 patients to prioritize um, when resources are scarce, sorry, there really isn't one right or wrong answer. It just honestly depends on your own moral intuitions. Um, 
So basically, doctors, as you can probably see on the news, doctors have been reportedly weeping in the hallways as they have to decide which patients to save. It's a lot to handle. It isn't easy. And in fact, doctors who have dedicated their careers to actually helping patients are now having to turn people down and say, I, I can't help you. There's someone else I need to help. So this is obviously, as you can see, a very ethical dilemma. Um, and in my personal opinion, and a lot of doctors would probably agree with me, including famous philosopher David Hume, um, if, if you have a 99-year-old male or female patient that's a patient with a lot of diseases and might only have three to five years max living, um, but then you have a young kid who has coronavirus and there's only one ventilator left. I personally would choose a young kid as the utilitarian mindset um, because it's just not like you're going to toss a coin into the air and choose. Most people would choose to help the kid because they have a whole life ahead of them. They might benefit, uh, they might benefit other people by saving that person, you know? So that's just my presentation. I really do think that the utilitarian mindset is the best when it comes to these incidents in hospitals and I'm just excited to see what you guys think, um, what your mindset is on this topic and yeah, ask any questions you want guys. Bye, have a good one.